In this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of capacitors and capacitance. So let's begin by defining what a capacitor is. A capacitor is essentially a device that is used to store electric charge. And that electric charge is usually stored using two conducting parallel plates which are placed a certain distance between one another as shown in the following diagram. So these are our two conducting parallel plates. Now they have the same exact area and they have the same exact shape and size. So we connect these two conductors using a conducting wire as shown in the following diagram. Now in this case there is no voltage difference between plate 1 and plate 2 and because there is no voltage difference in other words the voltage on plate 1 is equal to the voltage on plate 2 electrons will not flow and that basically means the charges on these two plates will be neutral now what happens if I take a battery and I place a battery into our wire circuit as shown in the following case so to go from this to this diagram we essentially insert a battery now what exactly is a battery a battery is essentially a device that creates an electric potential difference so it creates a voltage difference and now because we have a voltage difference between this side and this side of our battery electrons will begin to flow and electrons will flow from this parallel plate to the positive end of our battery from a lower potential to a higher potential and likewise electrons will begin to flow from this side from a lower potential to this parallel plate to a higher potential and now because we have an electric potential difference because we have a voltage difference electrons will flow and that will create a separation of charge on these two parallel plates. So we're going to have a positive charge on this plate shown here by positive Q and a negative charge on this plate shown here by negative Q. Now the voltage difference between these two parallel plates will be equal to the voltage difference between these two ends of our battery. So once again, a voltage difference is required for electrons to flow from the lower voltage to the higher voltage, which is exactly why electrons collect on this plate and they leave this plate because there is a voltage difference that exists as a result of this battery. So here we have our two parallel plates. Now these two parallel plates will have a surface area given by A and will be placed a certain distance D apart. This two quantity, these two quantities will become important when we discuss other things about capacitors in the future lectures. Now, for any given capacitor, it turns out that the quantity of electric charge that can be stored on these parallel plates is directly proportional to the voltage between these two plates. So that basically means if we increase the voltage of our battery, if we increase the voltage difference that exists within our battery, the capacitors will be able to store more electric charge. So our charge is directly proportional to our voltage. So that basically means we have the following equation where C is simply our proportionality constant. Now C is also called our capacitance. So Q, the quantity of charge that can be stored on either one of these two plates is equal to C, the capacitance of that plate multiplied by the voltage difference between our battery, which is the same voltage difference that exists between between our two parallel plates. So if we take this equation and we plot it on the xy plane, we get the following linear slope. So our Q is equal to the product of C multiplied by V, where our y-axis is the charge 
and our x-axis is our voltage. So we see as the voltage increases, the quantity of charge that is stored on either one of the capacitors also increases. Now notice this is a linear equation. So y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope, x is our uh, x-coordinate, and y is our y-coordinate, and b is simply where our linear line intersects our y-axis. Now in this case, it happens to be zero, so our b is zero, our y-intercept is zero. So that means our equation becomes y is equal to m times x. And this is the same form as Q is equal to C multiplied by V. So C is our slope. The capacitance represents our slope. And we see that the steeper the slope is, the greater the capacitance is because the greater the C value is. Now, what exactly is capacitance? The capacitance of any capacitor is essentially how much electric charge that capacitor can store. So a higher capacitance, a higher C value means the plates can store a greater quantity of charge per unit voltage. Now what exactly are the units for capacitance? So capacitance, we can take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for our C. The capacitance given by C is equal to Q divided by V, where Q is the charge given in coulombs, and V is the voltage difference given in volts. So we see the units for capacitance are coulombs per volts, and this is given its own unit that is called the farad, given by an uppercase F. Now, what exactly does our capacitance depend on? Notice that even though Q is equal to C times V, capacitance doesn't actually depend on the voltage or the charge. Capacitance depends on other things that we'll talk about in a future lecture. But for now, we'll mention that capacitance depends on size and shape of our capacitor. It depends on the surface area of the capacitor capacitor given by A. It depends on the separating distance between our two parallel plates and it also depends on the substance that is found in between our two plates. Usually the substance is air